Have mercy on me, O God, for people that say me, fight me all day long, and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, my dear sisters and brothers, especially those of you who are connected to really here. I only have sisters today present in the church. <laughs> to all of you who are watching, and especially who are participating in this Mass, we welcome you. Thank you for being with us. Yesterday, since yesterday, we are we praying that technology is on our side, and that everything works well today. Thank you for being with us this morning. Our community offers this Mass for the special intentions of Mariana Santos, the special intentions of Elisa Cortez, and also the special intentions of President Trump. We pray for these intentions and we continue praying also for this pandemic to be over soon, especially for all the people who are struggling in their bodies, in their souls, or in their spirits, for everything that's going on. Let us pray that as part of our Lenten journey that we may receive grace that calls us to deeper conversion. I confess. O oh God, whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly King. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who sin reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us listen to the Word of God. Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. 
If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband Joachim the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders rose up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears, she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made this accusation. As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we in a corner, in a corner of the garden saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together, but the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testified to this. The assembly believed them since the, they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O oh, eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have tested falsely against me. Here I am, about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel, the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated, one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just, you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me, under what tree you saw them together? Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has crossed you your head. For the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Responsorial Psalm. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. He sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses, he commanded us to stone such women. So what did you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. When they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. In response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then she straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then she said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, as we continue getting closer and closer to the celebration of the Paschal Mystery in Holy Week, the Gospel continues to share with us those stories in which Jesus experiences the tension between him and his enemies growing. But also today, in a very special way, the, the Church, by pairing this Gospel with the story of Susanna from the book of Daniel, wants us especially to analyze how our spiritual growth has been during the season of Lent. How? Because if we put those texts together, we see that there is a pattern in both. And especially, we could probably speak about three groups of people, or three types of people, that appear in the story. First of all, we find the accusers, the elders in the first story, and all Pharisees and scribes and elders in the story of the gospel. Then we find the accused person, in the first reading we have Susanna, and in the reading of the gospel we have this woman, a lot of people think it's Mary Magdalene, but we never hear that in the story. That's a connection that a lot of people have made up, but it's not there in the gospel. And then of course we have the savior, the rescuer, who in the first reading is Daniel, and in the reading of the Gospel, of course, is our Lord Jesus Christ. And the question is this, especially as we get closer and closer to the end of the season of Lent. Have we been able to grow in our own Christian life, 
in such a way that we have experienced that transition into each of these roles until finally we get to be rescuers and saviors of others. What does that mean? A lot of us, of course, in our life tend to accuse other people. I mean, that is something that happens in our conversations. And especially it happens when tension is growing in our lives when we're stressed like today. I mean, with all these things that's happening around in the world. We accuse others for many different reasons. A lot of that, and this is, this is according to God's word, happens as shadow work that we haven't done. So actually we project our own things on other people most of the time. That's actually what happens. The other thing that also happens is this scapegoat mechanism. I mean, especially with all this tension that we are experiencing, it's just very common. Oh, well, let's blame the government for not making the right decisions. Let's blame the church. Let's blame all those who have not been responsible and have brought this epidemic to become a pandemic and things like that. I mean, the scapegoating mechanism is very, very common. And also sometimes we try to accuse others because we have a sense of justice that needs to be fulfilled. And that's normal, first of all. The first thing is, and we have to always keep in mind, yes, always remember this, when you want to accuse someone of doing something or of being something, the Satan, that word we find for the devil, first of all, means the accuser. <laughs> so whenever we're accusing other people, we may look more than Satan like than God. I mean, that's just something that you have to keep in our minds. But of course, sometimes we need to find a sense of justice. I mean, that's why we have justice systems in most places in the world. But first of all, whenever we need to really follow a process to file something, for example, to accuse someone, the first thing that we need to do is to really pray about our reasons and see that we're doing that for the right reasons. The second thing is to see if whatever we want to get as compensation is fair. That's the second thing. And the third one, and this is very important, that the process we are trying to follow really leaves a door open to hope for the person that's being accused. Hope of transformation, hope of conversion, Hope of going back to life after learning all of those things and amend their lives. I mean, that's crucial. That's why the church, even through our highest authority, which is the Pope, has made clear that death penalty is not an option for Christians. If we don't leave that door open for hope of going back to life being transformed, then simply we are not following the gospel. I mean, that's clear. And the Holy Father has made it very, very clear. Uh, we always have to find those three things when we need to accuse someone, because if not, it might just be, again, shadow work that we haven't done, or even scapegoating mechanism, or even just a sense of injustice or injustice in our heart. The second thing is being the accused. I mean, we're all accused all the time. And again, when we are moved by the Holy Spirit for conversion, and that's our conscience, the Holy Spirit always shows us the door that's open to hope. When it's the devil, then we fall into despair. It's the main difference between Peter after betraying Jesus and Judah after betraying Jesus. That's a big, big difference. Uh, one actually experienced the process as conversion, became the first pope. The other one, we know how his story ends in despair. So we've all been accused, but hopefully we have found also the Savior, the Rescuer. And in the economy of grace, we know that that not only doesn't apply to this life, even though, of course, Jesus frees us, free our souls and everything to be in this life more functional. But as well, but especially, it applies to the life that's promised in the next world to come. But we are rescued by that rescue. The thing about Lent for us is that hopefully, hopefully we have also moved into those different roles of being accusers, into then recognizing that probably we're doing a lot of that because we ourselves are accused. Then also, after experiencing redemption, to bring that redemption to others. Are we actually helping others to experience freedom? To feel hope, to experience hope, instead of experience being the accused and those who are put aside by the rest of society, by our own families, by our own church, etc. Are we bringing hope to others? That's the growth that the season of Lent invites us to experience. Hopefully through all these things that we are going through, we are able to actually experience grace so that we're able to bring that grace to others. 
and hopefully together with our Lord, we can stand on the side of those who help others experience freedom and not on the side of those who accuse others to experience that nation. Let us offer our prayers to God. The Lord is our shepherd. There is nothing we shall lack. Let us place before the Lord our needs and those of our world. Let us pray for those snared by a life of crime from which they cannot escape. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those whose lives are ruined by those things that bring bad publicity to their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we may be slow to criticize others, very hasty in our judgments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that in our valley of darkness we will feel the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for all those who work in medical profession, as doctors, as nurses, or health care keepers. They may be protected, they may find mercy and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, be with us as we prepare for the Easter festival. Listen to our prayers, those spoken out loud, those in the silence of our hearts, and grant all we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us suffer our lives. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For of the earth and work of human hands, come for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash me, O God, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, may bring before you as a fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment of the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks to an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, 
and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things, make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take it, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be proud for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, to look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, and her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing health. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, with Gustavo, our Bishop, with Michael, his Fury, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have solved before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, 
forever and ever. Amen. Savior is man informed by divine teaching. We dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant you peace in unity, in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's suffer each other in silence. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am thou not worthy that we should enter under my roof, but always say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Has no one condemned you, woman? No, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, sin no more. Now I invite you all who are present in your homes to offer this prayer, which is an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. As I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come to me spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I myself holy to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen.
strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, may follow in Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Set free from your sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.